My name is Steven Prachner. I'm the program manager for the PIC CPU tools in the gaming division at Microsoft. This is the third in a series of four videos introducing the new implementation of timing captures in PICs. In this video, I'll cover the new analysis tool we've built called the Metrics View. This view enables you to quickly analyze large volumes of data to find common performance problems such as spikes in frame time. The scenario for this video is, say I've been given a capture from a playtester's machine. They've played the game for an hour or two and have reported some glitches. So I'm going to use the new analysis features and timing captures to help me determine what's causing the spikes. This main loop event represents a frame of CPU time in my game. So if there are spikes, presumably there will be periods of time when the duration of this event is much larger than normal. So I'm going to use the metrics view to help me find these instances. So I select the event and choose graph in metrics view. The x-axis in the metrics view is time. So this is the length of my capture. And the y-axis is the value of the duration of main loop at any point in time. So you can see as I mouse around here, the tooltip is displayed showing both the x and y values. And in most cases, the duration of main loop is pretty consistent. But there are definitely some times when it spikes. I'm going to start by drilling into one of these spikes to see if we can determine what is causing it. I'm going to select a little bit of time before the spike and a little bit after. Right click and say zoom to selected range. So now I'm looking at individual frames of data. And what I'd like to see next is what's going on in the timeline when this spike occurs. So I'll select a few frames before the spike and a few frames after, right click and say zoom timeline view to selected range. This takes me back to the timeline at the point where the spike occurred. And the bad frame stands out pretty clearly. When looking at the shape of this frame compared to others, the duration of this update enemy positions event really stands out. This event is present in the other frames it's just very small. So now I'm wondering if the spikes in the frame time always correspond to increased duration of update enemy positions. So I'm going to select update enemy positions and graph it in the metrics view. I'm going to change the line style from the default of line to impulse. And I'm also going to change the color so that it stands out a bit more. Now I'll use control mouse wheel to zoom all the way back out to the entire capture. What I'm looking for here is, are the spikes in main loop always correlated to spikes in this update enemy positions event? And it looks like they are. You can see as I hover over update enemy positions, the red lines correspond to the spikes in main loop. So now I'm going to go back to the timeline and look some more at update enemy positions. Unfortunately, there are no PIX events under update enemy positions that can help me figure out what's going on. Instead, the first thing I'll try is looking at the call stacks of the CPU samples that were collected during the capture. The samples are drawn as vertical black lines on the top of the thread lanes. And when I click on a sample, element details is populated with the sample's call stack. So in this case, towards the top of the call stack, I can see a call to operator new. So maybe when update enemy positions takes an unusually long amount of time, it's doing some memory allocations that are not expected. So I can click through samples on the timeline individually, but it's much more efficient to look at all the sample call stacks using the range details view. I'm going to select a range of time corresponding to our long event. I'm going to change the data type and range details to CPU samples. And now when I select a row in the table, element details is populated with that samples call stack. And now I can just use the mouse to quickly iterate through all my samples. And if I do this enough, I start to see a pattern where several of these call stacks look like either memory is being allocated or reallocated based on some vector processing I'm doing in my code. 
So that's something I might want to go look more at. Another technique I can use to find out more about what's happening is to look at some of the custom counters that I've added to my title using the PIX Report Counter API. I happen to know that I've used PIX Report Counter to emit a few different custom counters from within my update enemy positions function. So I'm going to switch back to the metrics view, and if I expand this custom counter node, and see it displays a counter called num bullets processed. This name and the values have been emitted from my title when I called picks report counter. So I'm going to graph this counter in the metrics view. Again, I'm going to switch the line style to impulse. I'm going to change the color so it stands out from the other events. And now what I'm looking to see is whether spikes in the time uh, that update enemy positions takes, are they correlated to increased values of num bullets processed? And it looks like they are. As I hover over the green and the red here, the graphs show a strong correlation. So this gives me another clue about what might be going on that's causing my spikes. So to summarize, I've used the metrics view to quickly find spikes in a large capture. We've graphed the duration of PIX events, as well as custom counters that I had added to my title in order to draw correlations that can help me determine the cause of spikes in frame time. Thank you.